Welcome to the Neophytes of Narratology, the internet's most pretentious and pseudo-intellectual pursuit since, perhaps, Nietzsche's thus podcast, Zarathustra, or Camus' renowned vlog of Sisyphus. While lesser men aspire to stand on the shoulders of mere giants, we at the Lost Signals will accept nothing less than titans. So join us as we delve into the fundamentals of narrative nuance and critique the critics who proclaim to know the universal qualities of effective storytelling. Hello and welcome back to Neophytes and Narratology. We are doing another edition of our TED Talks episodes. I am Stevo, joined today by Jonathan Ian Manzer. I didn't learn much about narrative in this episode, but I learned a lot about J.J. Abrams. And Scott Thurlow. I learned possibly more than I ever wanted to know or hear <laughs> from J.J. Abrams, but we'll discuss shortly. And as you may have guessed, we listened to J.J. Abrams' TED Talk today uh, entitled Mystery Box. Which is also a porno store that I frequent. <laughs> So, this was a talk about. Can you tell us why, exactly what it was about? <laughs> yes, I can tell you exactly what it was about. Okay. Why J.J. Abrams likes mysteries so much? That's pretty much it. Right. And that's that's fair. Yes. You know he he gives a lot of examples and shows a bunch of clips. I think this might be the least substantive. Episode that we've uh, episode or TED talk that we've watched so far in this series. Indeed, it is, and here's why. Right, <laughs> much like the works of this is what I got out of it. Much like I argue for the works of Abrams himself, his talk was indeed padded by references and shots of other <laughs> previous better works <laughs> to pad it all out. That is somewhat true. So yes. that's my takeaway from generally. He, he it was literally a, talks yeah. about ripping off other directors in this. Yes, so. it was a meandering do, talk to say the least. I I, I want to say about but it but he gives you he gives you an idea of what to rip off yeah sure i guess don't rip off the shark rip, rip off, off steven spielberg rip off right. the characters well, like ian said yeah you learn a lot about <laughs> abrams but not necessarily about narrative well, itself here's what i got out of it one the mystery is important but not necessarily the closure and right. we recently had a podcast uh which goes against something else which we, is we uh, narrative well. closure yeah. by noel uh Carol. Carol. And he did this talk by the time Loss was going on, which exemplifies all mystery, no closure. Yes. He that also I talked about his love of technology and special effects, which goes heavily into his movies, and his love of like that kind of nostalgia, nostalgia, especially for directors. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about uh, Star eight Wars, mil of or ten mil it was eight millimeter camera. Uh, Super eight. Super, Super eight. eight. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he made a movie later on called Super Eight. Talks about Steven Spielberg. He has basically remade a number of Steven Spielberg and George Lucas movies. Uh, yeah, he mentions Alien, times. which is Cameron. Yeah. So sure. So yeah, I mean, so, sure. He he wears his lineage on his sleeve, but mm -hmm. that's already so obvious anyway yeah. that. Like so, I said, it just felt like padding to I, me. I, I felt like I got to understand his process. Sure. And I don't, I maybe dislike him less it's <laughs> now than I used to, but it's still that, yeah, I understand what you're doing, but you're not my type of, you're, you're not interested in the same thing about a story that I am. Right. So I tend to like J.D. Abrams' works, although on his original ones, I tend to like them until the end of them. Whereas, like, I like Star Wars, and I like right. his, I like his take on, uh, uh, on uh, Star Trek, as well. But he already has the ending written for him at that point. He's got, he's got, you know, he's got the idea of what the closer closure has to be in those exactly, movies. Exactly. But that's whereas in Lost, the closure was like non-existent or completely garbage. Yeah, exactly. Depending and on how you look at it. Precisely, and yeah, we can rephrase it as such. But as Ian said, he meanderingly told us why he sort of is drawn to that and that's how he approaches writing his stories mm -hmm. which yeah goes against a lot of our sensibilities or at least the ones we agree with and uh discussed uh recently as well that sure it's almost like all mystery so the, the closure is no longer relevant really at least in his mind he, he finds the mystery more fascinating than right. solving the mystery he's clearly and sure yeah that, he's, that's he's an clearly approach more interested in that you can take uh creating a mystery 
than in right. solving the mystery. And this is concretely exemplified in the fact that he has a mystery box that he got when he was a child that he still has not opened. So he hasn't found out what is in this mystery box. And he has it on stage the entire time. Sure. It's a yeah, box I mean... with a big question mark on it. Right. And, you know, the idea of that mystery being the most important thing, not what the answer to that mystery is, is very obvious in his in his life, apparently, from what he talks about in this TED Talk, and in his works. Yes, he derives his uh, sensibilities from that box and also derives a lot of other things, as we might say. <laughs> but sure, like I but get, he doesn't yeah. derive the contents of that box. Exactly. I get where he's coming from, and yeah, that is a perfectly reasonable, acceptable approach. It's mm-hmm. just not the one that I'm necessarily in line with, as uh, Ian also said. Another point that I think is interesting, and I next time I watch a movie of his, I we're gonna focus. Keep it on in mind. Yeah. I already knew he was kind of a like a tech snob of sorts, and likes his special effects and likes the use of like CGI and mm-hmm. computers to develop. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. But he's talking about that, like in Jaws, for instance, how you shouldn't rip off the shark; you should rip off the tender moments, of the character, the character moments. Yeah, and I, I respect that, except. Thinking back, it when, always feels when like... When does he do that, is what you're going to say, maybe? Not only... But I, I no, would say that the mm-hmm. moments he captures... Uh, we mentioned this uh, about integrity in another of these... Uh, in honesty, and talking about what you know. He gets the surface aspect of the tender moments without any of the, the depth mm-hmm. of what or the original creation was intending to do. So I, I really want to analyze in the next J.J. Abrams movie I see how deep this his how substantive his characters actually are i don't think i agree with that i think he does a good job with character moments and i think he focuses on it a lot especially well getting away from the works that he's done recently because those are you know directly uh originating outside of himself but sure especially in lost there was this really interesting way that he went about creating um mystery surrounding characters where characters many of the characters had these very um sine wave like arcs where they were you know you were supposed to like them at one point and then they then you realize that they can be a shitty person and then they come back up and like redeem themselves and then they go back down and i thought that that was really interesting in the way that he developed those characters but are they people or are they mystery boxes well that's what i'm going about us waiting to say that and essentially if you take it as such then yeah they contain those elements sure but is that enough to round it all out i guess is my question i think that he makes well rounded characters do they have closure probably not right. but and and well, i think that and Abrams, i think I guess, that but... i think that is an important part of a character i think that in a in a good story, a character has to have closure. I'm not saying that he does a good job of that, but I think that he does make good uh, characters. And yes, I think that every person is a mystery box to an extent. All right, I, I'll concede that he does that well. Sure. I, I just my question is remains: do I do I personally think that's enough? Sometimes it isn't always. Sometimes it can be, but that's all I would say. To your point earlier, are we just critiquing J.J. Abrams? Yes, because that's what he offered us. In well, this his, talk. his talk was me. Yeah, yes, yeah. That sure. is true. Um, he, but about the characters, as I said, I'm I'm now doing this upon uh, memory, so I need I need to see his next work to see how actually whether it's whether there is Stays depth two to, to it form. or yeah. it's a it's a covering of another of a one dimensional character over. His concept of the mystery box. Mm. I don't. Th- which I don't I think could, it is. Well, that's things I don't know yet. Well, but I guess now we'll see. I have. The, but that seed of doubt yeah. is ne- that's going to be what I'm focusing on even, in his next sure. film. Even if I'm going into, well, yeah, I, I think that is something that you should look at, and I think if you're looking at it in that through that lens, I think that you will see that he does a lot of work to make characters well rounded, not not only like likable or you know. Uh, good villains but i think that he tries to round out characters to give them a sense of both the good and the bad that people have in them and like you can look back you can look back at uh you know even even a couple of his most recent movies like spock in star trek is a really good character in that i think yes but it's again a character that existed already and he did subversions because i think when we saw the star trek 
uh, not Star Wars, uh, the new one. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, uh, we're going in. He's going to do subversions on the standard or the the previous work that came out, and it's going to be. It's going to not be a copy, but a rhyme of A New Hope, and it mm-hmm. absolutely was. So, again, he's working with all these developed characters. But, again, I don't know. Like, Yeah, Spock was developed to a certain extent, but it, all it was to me now, like, I, I, I haven't seen it in, uh, no. recently that I, can, I don't know how much depth there take is it, there. Sure. I mean, I guess we're not going to come to an agreement in this tonight. We're going to have to watch maybe his next movie. Um, which I don't even know what it is. He's not doing the well, next it, Star I think, Wars. Uh, let me just make a quick, perhaps important distinction that it will depend upon whether he's doing an established franchise or something like an original work fr- that he developed himself. Right. Mm. I think one of the strongest things about any of his works that I've seen, it, at least in my mind and my memory, is are, are his characters. Yes, I think that he kind of just doesn't really have an ending in mind a lot of times. <laughs> And granted, I haven't seen any of his like original screenplay movies. I don't think. Uh, I didn't see Super Eight, and I didn't see. I forget what the, the he. I think he directed the one with the three kids who like get powers or whatever. I don't remember. I forget what it's called. Maybe but I believe you. I did see Lost, and I think that the strongest point of that, and the reason that people kept watching it, was because of the characters. I mean, in a large way, yes. I- I don't want to make make it seem that I hate on him as much as perhaps it was implied earlier. I like a lot of his stuff. It's just that I guess what it comes down to, like we said earlier, for me, it's always going to be the fact that he seems to, because of his attraction to the mystery box paradigm, I guess I want to call mm-hmm. it, that that's, what he, that's the angle he's approaching it from, which, yes, can work, and yes, can be good and as, as applied to characters. I don't disagree with a large portion of that. It's simply that, at the end of the day, my... Uh, personal taste and analysis i don't like like i don't necessarily agree with that as an approach to storytelling my and my last point on this is that if you're going with mystery box you don't even have to open the box you just have to give me an idea of what's in the box or like just let me guess what's in there sure and i think that all he does is present the box i think that's really well his said. original yeah. works yeah like on and on the stage and then talks yeah i mean i think that he kind of I, I think that you're right. I think that he just as as you said, as he did on the stage, he just presents the box and there it is. It's a big question mark and that's what he is really interested in. That's what he really wants to that's what he really wants to add to the conversation. Right. Is, it's like his basis. Sure. Here here is a whole mess of, here here's a you know, whole mess of people and the idea is that you don't really know what you're getting and i actually let me let me backtrack because the people aren't the important thing in his the people aren't the mystery characters are definitely thing. not the most important no no, no, thing. no that's not true the people the people are the most important thing but you get to know the characters what you don't get to know is what the plot is doing you don't really get to know why the plot is doing what it's doing. It meanders for a while. It, it, it gives you the idea that it's doing something intentionally, and then it doesn't do it. Right. All right. Let me say two things. In much the same way his talk meandered, yes, his plots meander and sort of somewhat peter out. So I guess my, my question is this, and I'll answer it, but it, it goes back to what you just said. He presents the mystery box. That's his approach. Is that enough for you as an audience member is the question. To me, it can be, but... it. Usually, it is not going to be. No. I, I don't think that it is. I think that he needs... I, I think that in his yeah, future the box works, is a nice, to become... It's a nice basis, but you can't. You have to build upon that. Right. You can't I think, just use that. I think that, that he, I think that he is a... I think that he could be a very good director if he can figure out how to write a good ending. <laughs> sure. I think he can be a very good director when he develops his own voice. I, don't, I think he has yet to do that. Or at least solidify it more, if mm-hmm. not that. He certainly sure. does seem to rip off people a lot. And, like, he has all these good ideas, I think, that come from other places and start in other places. And he's, like, just about at the point where he needs – where he, where he can diverge from them and be far enough apart – far enough diverged from those ideas. But he's not – he doesn't quite make it. 
to be fair, uh, Spielberg and Lucas got a lot of their like the Star Wars and yeah, Jones from the, from the old pulp stuff, yeah, pulp sure. stuff that yeah. they grew up with. So again, yeah, J.J. Abrams is that the new generation of that. Of that. Except That's true. Maybe not George Lucas, but Spielberg found his own voice. Mm-hmm. And I think that J.J. Abrams... Therein maybe, lies the difference. Yes. Yeah. Sure. And I don't think working on these big name projects, which are uh, like Star Trek and Star Wars, helps him do that. They're I his dream projects anyway yeah. when you're a kid, but that means you're going yeah. like, to be beholden to them and not necessarily explore out on your own and yes. try, try different things. I agree with that. I will say um, that I think that he's fairly young as far as directors go. Mm-hmm. So he does have time to develop that. And I... I'll I'll go I'll keep going to see his movies. I I think that they're enjoyable enough, and I really loved Star Wars. I know you guys didn't like it as much as I did. I really loved Star Wars. It was, but fun. yes, I mean that was because it played off of the yeah, of formula course. of A New Hope, which was playing off a of formula in and of itself. Mm-hmm. But it played off the formula of A New Hope to make it a great to, in my mind, to make it a great movie, sure. and to a fault in my mind. Right. However. I will say that I think that he has the technical aspects of directing down Pat. So if he can start focusing on the storytelling aspects of it a little bit more, especially the third act storytelling aspects of it, I think that he'll I, – this this kid's going places. <laughs> Invest in him if you can do that. Sure. Um, but no, I agree with basically everything we just said. And we laid, I think how we laid it out – and sure, it's an insight – into how he approaches storytelling, mm-hmm. which might change the way you view his stories themselves. Mm-hmm. I just it's it's going to depend where you fall on the fence of whether or not you agree with that as the uh, as a, a solid basis. So, as kind of a final thought here, if about this TED talk itself, if you have any interest in J.J. Abrams or the movies he's done and the kind of the mo- where filmmaking is today you can get a lot of insight into who it's he interesting is and enough his on that front. ideas sure yeah that was i feel like i got to know him here and uh really see his influence and everything like that yeah that's kind of what i was uh well, what i was gonna say is i know we talked a little bit more about jj abrams and his work than we did about this talk but that's kind of because that's where this talk led us so it wasn't one in the same there really wasn't that much it, it, he was talking about his process for most of it, and I think us uh, doing an episode about his TED Talk kind of led naturally into talking about him as a director and ha- and where he's been. I think that's about it. You guys good? This is going to be Steve-O for Neophytes and Eratology. I am, have been joined by Jonathan Ian Manzer. A mystery box all to himself. <laughs> and Scott Thurlow. I'm going to return to my own mystery box right now. Good night. Have a good night. This has been the Neophytes of Narratology. We hope that you've experienced an epiphany or two of the literary nature, but only metaphorically, of course. Music by Christopher Morgan. Editing and engineering by Jonathan Ian Menzer.